So in the past, we've already looked at the regional differences for Mario Brothers 2 and Mario Brothers 3, and there's a downward trend of regional differences as each sequel goes on, and this trend continues with Super Mario World. But the differences between the US version and the Japanese version, as well as the small difference in the European version, add up to a whole handful of really small, interesting things. And so today I'm going to show you all the differences that I could possibly find, and weigh in my own thoughts on why all these changes were made. Okay, well, with that in mind, let's do it. Here we go. So first I thought we'd start with the title screen because there's like a million things different about this. Let's start with the most obvious thing. The Super Mario World logo has a much deeper drop shadow in the Japanese version, which also means that the text in general for Super Mario World is different from both versions. They're also placed a little bit differently. So when you fade in from one version to another, you can see that the US version is a little bit more in the upper left hand corner. Moving on, you got the trademark on the very end there. And for the Japanese version, it's black. And for the US version, it's blue and a lot thicker. And the copyright years at the bottom only has 1990 for the Japanese version and for the US version it has 1990 and 1991. And believe it or not, we're still not done here. If you paid very close attention to the wooden planks, they seem to have been altered slightly to make it more obvious that that's what they are. There's more use of an effect that shows holes within the wood planks. And if you're still not seeing it, the easiest way to tell the difference between the two planks, the US version looks like a fish man with his mouth wide open, whereas the Japanese version looks like that same plank of wood has its mouth closed. I just hope that you can see what I see. <laughs> Moving on, the Yoshi sign that we all know and love right at the start of the game has Japanese text on the sign for the Japanese version, which makes perfect sense. Also, we will get into translations later, but one visual difference between the two versions is that Yoshi kind of signs his name with a paw print in the US version, whereas there's nothing like that at all for the Japanese version. Resnor in the US version, of course, has the name Resnor on the sign, and the name of the Resnor in the Japanese version is Bui Bui. So, you know, it only makes sense that the Japanese name would be on there. Still an absolutely bizarre boss. Bowser's light up neon sign in the US version is replaced by Koopa, and this is because in Japan, that is the name of the main antagonist. Simple enough. Now here's something that's really bizarre. The credits are really different between the two versions. Mostly just the titles, not the names of the people credited. Like the main director in the US version is known as the total director in the Japanese version. The area director in the US version is known as the course director over in Japan. Background programmer in the US version is still background programmer in the Japanese version. It's just programmer is spelled differently and background is spaced out. And that misspelling was also fixed for the map programmer. I'm not going to point out the obvious pun here, but if anybody wants to leave it in the comments section, I'll be sure to hit love on that comment. Anyways, area data input for the US version was originally course editor, which I feel like gets the point across a lot better. Character graphic designer was changed from CG designer and for the special thanks to section a colon was added to the US version and there's also a singular person that was added to the US version Dave Brooks. Anyways keeping with the theme of the graphics being different Princess Peach in particular went through a lot of changes for some weird reason. In the US version Princess Peach when she walks over has two different frames of animation one that is identical to the Japanese version but then another where she has a more muted expression. In the US version Princess Peach's kiss has more of a wider side profile whereas in the Japanese version she looks more normal and why would the developers make this change well it's probably to better illustrate that she's actually kissing mario whereas in the japanese version i guess it could be misunderstood as like a hug or something like her lips don't quite reach mario though i feel that blush from mario kind of tells it all and of course this isn't a regional difference but it's a revisional difference that i think is really interesting a lot of u.s players are going to know this already and please if this information was new and interesting to you let me know just so that i can vibe whether or not it was worth putting into the episode but luigi in the Super Mario All-Stars plus Super Mario World version has been completely re-sprited to resemble more of the physique of Luigi. Whereas in any other version before this, Luigi was simply green Mario. And for as much as the game tries to emulate Mario's movements but with Luigi for Super Mario All-Stars plus Super Mario World, when you finish a level, it has a completely unique pose from what he had in the original versions, opting to cross his arms instead of doing the victory sign. Also because they re-sprited Luigi, he no longer has to have a green tongue because as you can see here, Mario utilized his red palette for his outfit to give himself a red tongue, but the developers weren't really thinking that far ahead with Luigi. Thus, his tongue does the same thing and just uses the off color when his mouth is open. And now let's talk about some of the Japanese exclusive merchandise for Super Mario World. 
One of the most interesting ones that I found was this series of plushes that includes a charging chuck as well as a magic koopa. And pretty much it's always going to be the case that in Japan, the merchandising goes way more hardcore than it does over in the US. You can also find things like the Super Mario World styled Goomba or even a player's guide that was published by Ape Software, which is the group that made Earthbound. Which, by the way, if you want to buy any of these items that I'm showing you on the screen right now, I highly recommend that you get them through our sponsor, Bai. And what they can do for you is convert your US dollars into yen, as well as ship any items that you purchase over to their warehouse, which negates the whole idea that the Japanese sellers only sell to other Japanese people. And then they can ship that item over to you in the US or wherever you reside. And like I said, if you're a collector of video game merch, you're going to have a really hard time finding items like these that you're seeing right now without folks like Bai helping you out. So it's a very, very useful service. I'll leave a link for you guys in the video description if you want to check them out. And if it's your first time using the service through me, you can get 2000 yen for free for whatever it is you want to buy. And with some free fun money, I mean, it's definitely worth taking a look. Thanks again, Bai. And now we're going to move on to our next topic. These are all changes that are different between each level. And to start with, Donut Plains 2 has a change that's pretty good for beginners. Right at the start of it, in the US version, they added a yellow exclamation block. The players can start off a little bit easy and have a mushroom. Whereas in the Japanese version, that doesn't exist. And then in the second area, the US version added a very random cape feather power-up. Maybe the developers found through testing that a lot of players lost their power-up in this particular area and wanted to give something back to the player. Or heck, the fact that it's a cape power up really helps out against these enemies in a way that a fire plant power up wouldn't. And then for the third castle or Lemmy's castle, they gave you an extra 100 seconds to get through this area, which I have to say was a really smart change. Considering the fact that in the US version, I ran out the timer pretty much all the time. <laughs> so I can only imagine having 100 seconds less would be even more of a nightmare for a more inexperienced player. Meanwhile, on Chocolate Island 3, there are three arrows in the US version trying to strongly hint where you need to go, whereas the Japanese version has one arrow sign. Sadly, neither one of these do a great job of illustrating where the player really needs to get going. Maybe if one of these signs was an up arrow with a cross through it, but as it stands, it <laughs> they tried their best. Moving on, the ghost ship, just before you get to the final area, there's a whole body of water underneath where that question mark orb is. And in the Japanese version, there's nothing down there. But for the US version, there's a total of three different one-ups that you could possibly get before it sinks all the way to the bottom, which may beg the question, why bother doing something like that? And again, this is just speculation, but the fact that there's nothing in there at all in the Japanese version is kind of lackluster, and that body of water does entice the player to have a sense of exploration. The other theory could just be that absent-minded players that made it that far only to die maybe felt a little bit too cruel, and the developers tried to put in the safeguard to at least reward the player to give another try. And then the secret boo house that can take you to Star Road has a graphical error that the developer decided to fix for the international version. One of the lesser popular features of the game, if you hold the left or right shoulder button, you can pan the camera to the left or right. And sadly in the Japanese version, if you do that in this particular spot, you can see a break in the boundary. And the developers decided to fix this boundary break over in the US version. And this one is awesome. We got a little bit of English in the Japanese version for basically the final level of the game. And we'll keep playing this footage over for you, but if you focus your attention over on the Japanese side, it says, you are super player. But somebody over on the US team was clearly a stickler for grammar and decided to go through the trouble of adding more coins to this area so that it says, you are a super player. That has to be the truest sentiment of how far a grammar stick will go when it comes to an opportunity to correct someone. And I just wanted to talk about this really quick. It doesn't really go with our theme at the moment, but I'm sure you don't mind. After you beat the game, it does a roll call for all the enemies that you faced. And what's really fascinating is that it has all the name differences written out in English letters. And you can see all the differences here. To kind of go through these pretty quick, I'm just going to name off some of the more interesting ones in Japan. Like P. Pakun KK Killer. Instead of Mega Mole, it's Indy. And instead of Bonsai Bill, it's Magnum Killer. <laughs> I like that it's Raita and Chibi Raita. We got Fugu Manon, which Fugu is Japanese for blowfish, I believe. Instead of Rip Fan Fish, it's Guska. The Boo Buddies were known as Talisa. <laughs> Fish and Boo was known as Spook. The Big Boo was known as Atomic Talisa. Dry Bones were known as Karen. What? 
and weirdest of all, the Koopalings or Koopa Kids all had their names expanded in the US version, with Morton Koopa Jr. and Ludwig von Koopa being particularly interesting. Also a big difference here is that when you clear the game after you've gotten the special world, the special enemies get their own names in the US version, whereas in the Japanese version they just hold the same names as the enemies that they've replaced. Anyways, here's one of the weirdest changes I have to say. Once again on the last stage, the fruit that Yoshi eats gets replaced with better fruit in the US version. In many many places where there's red fruit in the Japanese version, here you can see that green fruit. And now we're going to look at differences between the localization versus a more straight to the point translation. These translations were provided by Stella Swift, so thank you so much if you're watching this. The first thing I want to look at is all the dialogue for every single castle that you take down. The very first one has some really interesting stuff. In the US version it says Mario has defeated the demented Iggy Koopa in castle number one and has rescued Yoshi's friend who is still trapped in an egg. Together they now travel to Donut Land. But the Japanese version reads out more like at Yoster Island, which by the way, Yoster Island Island was something that was used in the Japanese version of Yoshi's Island, which I had no idea. Sorry, anyways, it says Mario defeated the first Ko Koopa, which is the way that the Japanese refer to the Koopalings. Mario and Ko saved their friend who was trapped in an egg by Koopa's magic, Koopa being Bowser, and set off for donut planes. Now Koopa's obviously Bowser as we just established, and it's here that we see a huge difference. See in the US version there's no mention of magic, however in Japan that's a pretty strong detail that lends itself better to the ending of the game. Now we skip the second castle because it's relatively the same. So for the third one it says Mario has triumphed over Lemmy Koopa of castle number three. Mario's quest is starting to get much more difficult. Have you found the red and green switches yet? Yeah. And already you can see in the Japanese text, the punctuation's a little bit different. And it reads, Mario and company defeat the third Ko Koopa and sigh a breath of relief. But the courses from here will become much more intense. If the green and red switches aren't flipped, what kind of journey will this turn out to be? For Ludwig's castle, it says Ludwig von Koopa's days of composing Koopa symphonies in the castle number four are over. The forest of illusion lies ahead. Mario must use his brain to solve the puzzle of the perplexing forest. This one is much, much different. Once again, not referring to the Koopaling by name, it says somehow having cleared the fourth Ko Koopa, Mario and company are moving on to the forest of wandering? It's a mysterious forest that one cannot leave unless they solve its mysteries. Will they really be able to escape the forest? And as you're probably starting to see, these are reading out more like cliffhangers to an action show, which seems to be completely deliberate as there's even evidence on the back of the game's box. The body of text that's underneath Super Mario World reads, One peaceful day, Mario, Luigi, and Peach set off on a vacation in the Southern Island, Dinosaur Land, Yoaster's Island. At least they were, until once again the great Demon King Koopa appears. His magic is cast on the island's dinosaur and Princess Peach has ended up kidnapped. Now this is bad. The remaining pair, Mario and Luigi, join forces with the mysterious dragon Yoshi and their action movie adventures facing Koopa's army unfold. It continues on the Super Famicom. See that action movie reference clearly plays into how these chapter dividers set the tone of the game. The ending dialogue here says, Mario's adventure is over. Mario, the princess, Yoshi, and his friends are going to take a vacation. And with the Japanese version, it's phrased more like, and with that, Mario's adventure comes to an end. With their Yoshi friends, he and Peach once again begin their fun vacation. Dot, 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 dot. So to summarize the big differences between the two stories is that originally Bowser's magic is what was trapping all these Yoshis and eggs, and Mario and Princess Peach were having a vacation on Yoshi's Island, which when you end the game, they continue that vacation on Yoshi's Island. And then for Yoshi's note in his house, he says, Hello, sorry I'm not home, but I've gone to rescue my friends who were captured by Bowser. Dash Yoshi. Which has that handprint that I mentioned earlier. And the Japanese one reads, Welcome. I've gone away on a journey to save my friends from Koopa. Those who have business with me, too bad. Super Dragon Yoshi. And a couple of things to note here. Super Dragon is written out to sound like English words. So it'd be like Super Dragon. And then I wanted to mention this because it's pretty cool. The special zone stages have very different naming conventions between the US version and the Japanese version. As evidenced in the Super Mario 3 episode, which by the way, if you haven't seen, I will definitely have links to. They seem to love to communicate with their audience directly. Whereas that seems to get a little bit scrubbed out in the US versions. And you'll see that in just a second. 
Going in order here, the name of the first stage in the US is Gnarly, but it's named Fun Course in Japan. The next stage is Tubular, and once again, the stage name is just Fun Course. You might have noticed that the characters over on the Japanese side did not change at all. But when you move over one more, in the US it's way cool, but in Japan it reads out as Mario's staff is just as surprised course. As if to say, they're just as surprised as you are. The next one in the US is Awesome, whereas once again, like I said, same in Japanese as the last one. Moving on from there, it's Groovy, and in Japan it reads out as Specialist Only Course. The next stage in the US is Mondo and staying true to themselves. Like mentioned in the past, the name of the stage is the same as the last one. Next up is Outrageous, which was named Championships Course in Japan. And lastly, in the US, it's Funky, only for it to be named once again, the same as the last course in Japan. Okay, for the box segment, we're gonna go through things at a more brisk pace than we usually do. First thing I wanted to show you is differences in the boxes themselves. Super Famicom boxes have a vertical look, whereas in the US, they decide to put it on its side, essentially, and have them look a lot wider. The front of the box has unique artwork that's not featured in the US version in any capacity, including the manual, and seems to feature a world that has illustrations of various things that you'll encounter throughout the game. Also, big, big difference here. Folks over in Japan got two titles, essentially. Sure, it still says Super Mario World, but it also says Super Mario Brothers 4, which to me, that's wild. Anyways, on the back, there's another piece of completely unique artwork, once again, not featured at all in the US manual or box, that seems to have a map and the map is even labeled as Super Mario World. It's incredibly cool that in order to look at the game's quote-unquote manual, you have to unfold it, which, as you can see here, it gets a little bit crazy. But what you're treated with is a giant map of the world itself, which is pretty cool. Now, this is featured in the US manual. And in fact, outside of the layout, just about every bit of artwork that's used in this manual is used in the US manual as well. So let's move over to that real quick. Does the US version have any unique artwork for itself? Well, well, surprisingly, yeah. All the way in the very, very back, there appears to be unique artwork of the Koopalings, which once again feature their expanded names. And without going neck deep into it, just want to also state while you're looking at the artwork here that the Japanese version story synopsis once again cements that the Yoshis being stuck in eggs is caused by magic, whereas the Super Nintendo version once again does not allude to this whatsoever. Anyways, I want to move on to differences in gameplay. Over here is a huge difference. Though they're not very common in Super Mario World, there are dolphins in both versions with one major defining difference. In the Japanese version, you could eat the dolphins with Yoshi, whereas in the US version, you couldn't. Now, I don't think you'd be in too much trouble, honestly, if you ate a ton of dolphins in the Japanese version. So I think this change was honestly made to accommodate sensitivity towards animal cruelty towards dolphins, which culturally has a much higher sensitivity to the US over Japan. Also, in the European version, the 1-ups move way faster than they do in the US version, which is a huge surprise. Of all the things for the European version to be different from the other versions. I can't believe it's that. And also between the US and the Japanese version, there's a little trick you can use in the US version to play the castle levels over again. And it's by pressing L and R. But in the Japanese version, you can't do that. And in fact, to prove that, right now on the screen, you can see what my button inputs are. Like if I press A, you'll see A. And if I press L and R, you'll definitely see that. So keep a close eye here and you'll see that when I press L and R in the US version, I get brought into the stage. Whereas in Japan, it's not possible. Anyways, if you're not subscribed and you enjoyed the content, feel free to hit that subscribe button if you want to see more content like this in the future. Also to new viewers and returning viewers alike, if you've missed any of these two episodes that are on the screen right now, highly recommend you check them out. They're probably what I would consider some of my best in the series, especially the Super Mario Brothers 2 one, I will say. But if you missed your chance on the screen, those links will also be in the video description. If you're not interested, thank you so much for spending your time watching this episode. It really means a lot. Anyways, guys, take care of yourselves.